Stem cell transplants bring hope to treat diseases that were once thought to be incurable. It gives you a chance to fight your cancer. Learning the process of an allogenic stem cell transplant helps you to be more clear about the procedure. What are stem cells? Stem cells are special paired cells that develop into blood cells and immune cells. Allergenic stem cells can be harvested from bone marrow, blood or umbilical cord blood. Bone marrow is part of the body's immune system that manufactures blood cells and immune cells. What is an allergenic stem cell transplant? In an allergenic stem cell transplant, your bone marrow is replaced with new healthy stem cells from another person. Who is the best stem cell donor? Your sibling is the best stem cell donor for you as his or her tissue type matches yours as closely as possible. There are certain genetic markers called the HLA that define your tissue type. These are similar to fingerprints or the white blood cells. To minimize complications, every effort is made to find a donor whose tissue type matches yours as closely as possible. To perform HLA typing, you and your siblings will be asked to provide a sample of blood. Normally, there is only a 1 in a 4 chance that your sibling's tissue type will match your own. If tissue typing reveals that your sibling is not a good match or you do not have any own siblings, the search widens to the general population to find an unrelated donor. How are stem cells collected from a donor? Stem cells from your donor's blood can be harvested through a simple non-surgical procedure known as apheresis. Apheresis is similar in many ways to blood collection. Normally, stem cells make up only a small portion of the cells found in the blood. Therefore, before apheresis, stem cells from the bone marrow must be induced to leave the bone marrow and enter the bloodstream. Stem cells are collected in two ways. The primary method is called the mobilization method. Stem cells can be taken directly from your bone marrow if mobilization method does not yield adequate stem cells. This can be done by harvesting the stem cells from the hip bone using special needles. Prior to the collection of stem cells, your donor will receive colony stimulating factor, also known as hematopoietic growth factor, through an injection under the skin for four to five days. During the stem cell collection, your donor is connected to an apheresis machine, also known as a cell separator. A needle is inserted into a vein in each arm. Blood is withdrawn from one arm and circulated through the machine. And the remaining blood components are returned through the needle in the other arm. What tests should a patient undergo before the transplant of stem cells? EKG, bone marrow biopsy, blood tests, pulmonary function test, and echocardiogram are usually done to ensure that you are a good candidate for the procedure. This also involves a preparative regimen, approximately one week prior to your transplant. The preparatory regimen consists of chemotherapy or total body radiation or combination of both. The aim of this regimen is to destroy cancer cells. Empty the bone marrow to make room for the new cells. It also helps to suppress your immune system to prevent rejection. How are the stem cells transplanted? Usually, two days after you have completed your preparatory regimen, you will receive your stem cell. Your donor stem cells will be administered into your vein near your central line the very similar way through blood transfusion. When the new stem cells enter your bloodstream, they get into your bones where they belong. It takes two to three weeks for the transplant to take foreign grafts 
and begins to produce healthy new blood cells. In an allogenic transplant, one to four collection sessions on subsequent days are necessary to collect enough stem cells. Normally, each session lasts for about four hours and daily administration of colony stimulating factors continue as long as stem cells are being collected. How are the complications dealt with? Graft versus host disease can occur when a donor's immune cells recognize your body, the host, as foreign. The donor's cell response for this type of attack are primarily a type of white blood cells called T lymphocytes. These T cells attack and usually affect the skin, gastrointestinal tract and liver, impairing their ability to function and increasing your susceptibility to infection. Graft versus host disease is a treatable condition. Similarly, a graft failure can occur when your immune system recognizes the graft as foreign and launches an attack against it. This can also occur when the transplant does not begin to produce new blood cells. To prevent graft versus host disease and graft rejection, you will receive medications, usually in the first three to six months following the transplant. You will need to stay in the hospital. During this time, you will be monitored closely to ensure that your bone marrow and immune system are functioning effectively.